number one to go through this video clip this is a rumor without this is a rumor that you shouldn't fucking believe or have any regard to because i'm just talking out my ass here but i have a feeling i have a feeling this is just my feeling i have a feeling that jessica kearson doesn't really like whitney cummings too much or whitney cummings I mean, I like, or, or whitney cummings doesn't like just jessica kearson i think there's a little bit of like no one say animosity but there's definitely something there there's definitely some sort of like wouldn't say hatred but maybe dislike between each other these women aren't there's no women's solidarity between jessica kearson and fucking whitney cummings i don't think that exists there definitely is a little bit of like nettle there and this is just my assumption rumor with no regard i'm just looking at my ass because i observed this little portion of the show with jessica kearson and tim dylan where tim dylan brings up whitney cummings name and Jessica doesn't really react too enthusiastically when talking about Whitney Cummings. Just listen to this a little bit and let me know what you think in the stream chat if I'm talking out my ass or not. And I wouldn't even know what the fuck, I don't even know what Every hey time we go to Whitney Cummings' house, all she does is promise there's going to be mega celebrities and it's always just Melissa Etheridge. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it's always just Melissa Etheridge. I, I know. And, and horrible food. Really? Whitney always brings in some woman chef who's wearing, wearing like horse leather <laughs> and and has a big Instagram presence and then, like, makes the worst food ever. And I'm just, I go and eat Melissa Etheridge's pussy just so I can <laughs> satiate myself. That's how bad it is. No, it's never good. Whitney's never good. But Whitney has a gorgeous house. A I'm fucking sure. amazing house. But she never kills it with the food. Yeah, no, I'm not that. She doesn't eat. I'm not that kind of they lesbian at all. They eat through needle, these people. <laughs> at a certain price point. In L.A., certain income bracket, you eat through the needle. I get it. Yeah. But I'm not that kind of lesbian at all where I would want it. But I like. You still notice that. She didn't really speak about Whitney in a glowing. No, comedian zoo. Whenever another comedian's name comes up, oh, my God, she's a beast. Oh, my God, he's a killer. Oh, my God, he's amazing. Oh, my God, the best guy. The bestest guy. The best of all guys. <laughs> comedians love doing that shit. Whitney Cummings' names come up and Jessica Kirsten was like, <laughs> oh, really? I'm sure. She didn't even say her name, I don't think. I don't think she even said her name in that clip. Oh, really? I'm sure. I don't think she likes her. I wonder why. Isn't it funny that Whitney Cummings doesn't happen to be friends with one of the only really legit funny comedians in their crew? Like especially in that was it LA crew but let's say out of the women comedians of that podcasting world because I think the weird thing about women comedians I feel like the women or female comedians in stand-up I feel like there's way more funny ones that don't have podcasts and the ones that have podcasts the majority of comedians who are women who have podcasts are really oh actually you know what it's the same with men most of the stand-ups who are really funny don't have podcasts who are men you just see them randomly at a show. You're like, oh shit, that guy's really funny. Like that Brian Simpson guy. I think Brian Simpson's fucking hilarious. I don't think he has his own podcast. I can't, I don't think so. So the funniest ones don't have pods. So it's interesting that Jessica Kirsten doesn't get on with one of the most popular female comedians with a podcast of Whitney Cummings. Even though Jessica Kirsten is like 1,000 times funnier than fucking Whitney Cummings has ever be. But I would wonder, I would love to know why they're not friends but anyway again oh jessica follows uh, whitney on ig hmm i don't know there's something there again maybe i'm reading too much into it maybe i'm being a fucking hag maybe i'm being a fucking nigger version of tmz nigger mz or something whatever i'm doing i don't know maybe i'm talking about my ass but i just had a feeling that there wasn't it wasn't as warm as i've seen other comedians because again comedians don't waste time to fucking suck each other off on the pods they'll let everybody know oh my god that person's the best is they didn't, she didn't do that, you know? And Tim was mentioning her name a lot of times. By the way, Tim is looking fucking wide, isn't it? Tim is looking like fucking Wings of Redemption here, isn't it? Tim, like, Tim has done that thing where he's now rich, so he knows when you're rich, it doesn't matter what you look like, right? Because you've got money. You've done the hardest thing. Because I think, I would say, it's harder to make a million dollars than it is to lose a hundred pounds. Would you guys agree with that? It's probably harder it's probably harder it's probably harder to lose it's probably harder to make a million dollars in your lifetime than it is to lose 100 pounds so when you're rich you realize that being fat doesn't matter because you've got a fucking million dollars plus in your bank account but tim needs to look after himself better man he's so pale he's so fucking fat it's fucking crazy how fat tim is now he's so wide 
But big up Tim. I don't mind him. Big up my big up my pig. He's fuck. He's the best. I love him. I love Tim Dillon. I wish I went to his show actually. Now I should have not been lazy. I went to his show in fucking London. But I'm lazy. So it is what it is. It is what it fucking is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Josie. Tim was on a podcast with a fur coat. He's balling and he doesn't give a fuck. Is you know what actually, Josie? You changed my mind. I think that's actually the best thing about him. He doesn't care. Tim Dillon's not gonna get on pods and start telling you about fucking elk meat. Start telling you about hunting. Start telling you about intermittent fasting. He's not even on Ozempic. He's so rich and so lazy. He can't be bothered to take Ozempic. I bet you, I bet you Tim Dillon doesn't want to take Ozempic because he doesn't want to lose the joy of eating. Because that's one thing he enjoys a lot. He talks very eloquently and very well about restaurants. He's very knowledgeable about food. So I could I could see a scenario where Tim Dillon doesn't want to take Ozempic because he knows if he doesn't take Ozempic, it takes away your appetite. He doesn't want to lose his appetite. He wants to have an appetite to, you know, to have fucking you know seafood and steak and whatever it may be he wants that shit so yeah big up tim that's actually a good point josie he he really truly doesn't give a fuck and also he's not gonna you know bombard you with talk of fucking kettlebells all that sort of nonsense he's just gonna get on fucking on his pod he's gonna scream and rant about the establishment he's gonna scream and rant about the military industrial complex he's gonna scream and rant about some hollywood person he's gonna do his little fake singing thing and he's gonna keep him moving but at least he's not going to fucking give you any fucking, you know, soliloquy about some other shit. So big up Tim Dillon. Big up fucking Tim motherfucking Dillon. Fiona Apples and Tracy Bonhams and Alanis Al- Morissette. Al- I was just going to say DeFranco Alanis Morissette. And people that were just like... I drank a beer and crashed my, crashed my car into a wall. Yeah. You looked at me with eyes of hatred <laughs> in the morning. My daddy, you die with a gun to your head. Yeah. And now every song is like, we were sitting on your porch <laughs> and we were drinking the tea that your mother made. We were sitting in my old car. I miss that car. Everything's nostalgia. I miss that car. Everything's nostalgia. Everyone is so broken. The, all these, yeah, and, this, the whole Eras tour is a bunch of broken people <laughs> that want to relive summer camp at Camp Onondaga when they first heard this crap. I just can't. I just want, like, I was alone when I was born, and I'll be alone when I die. When I die. I mean, please kill me, please, my baby, kill me, stab me in the throat. <laughs> now it's like, my mother, the bond that we have is so simple, simple like the honey in the tree. Well, it's like, it's also like very like, I get it because it's like the 80s are back because we went too crazy. Yeah, but it's too positive. Everyone wants to die po- now. Yeah, it's know, not it's real. Too po- <laughs> it's too positive. <laughs> it is very like... Can you imagine singing like that about basic. horrible things? Here's what I... This yeah. war in the Middle East, we're all gonna die. I think now, and I've, I've discussed this with people, my theory is that this is the revenge of the basic right now. <laughs> right. Like the basic bitch... And it's not a gender thing. I know a lot of guys that are basic bitches too. So yeah. don't give me that. What do you mean by that? Meaning it's the live, laugh, love, Ugg boot wearing, oh, kind of Nashville. Burn it all down. Burn, like, it's it's not like real. very basic, kind of heavily sedated, somewhat medicated, mm-hmm. which is fine. But like, you know what I mean? It's like very basic like w- like kind of white women energy like offended at everything but not really and then also like uh, very basic there it is there it is <laughs> Starbucks yeah yeah it's like Starbucks it's like it's the TikToks too yeah it's just very basic I, I think that people like that now are as- ascendant yeah and the culture is reflecting that because we went through this traumatic <laughs> nightmare hell of yeah. COVID right yeah where it, it, we understand coming through that people, the basic has ba- is back in it a has big way. Because everyone's traumatized. Every podcast now is like two girls and it's called Avocados in My Cunt. <laughs> and it's about dating. That's hot, by the way. And they're I like, have an and avocado in mind. there's nothing wrong with it, yeah. but it's just like it's two women who discuss <laughs> dating for 30, 36 hours a week. And they're like, oh, I, my God. I just tell them, like, if they don't call me back, I'm like, don't try me again. Because, yeah. look, I'm not going to be ghosted. You know what I mean? It's, it's really a Right, right. It's that. It's that. 
it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, welcome to bathroom talk. I'm Sarah <laughs> and this is Shauna. <laughs> And we're here. We have 1,500 hours of content on our Patreon if you want to subscribe where we discuss what it's like to get fisted and then have to meet the guy's parents an hour later. And it's like, I can tell he's smelling his fist every time at the rest. I'm like so uncomfortable. Fisted! We're going on a live tour. It's called Bathroom <laughs> Talk Live. Get those vapes and those cigarettes. Prop open the window. We're ditching biology. And they're billionaires, by the way. Billionaires. They're women, selling out they're arenas. They're billionaires. They're billionaires. But it's the revenge of the basic. And God bless them and God love them. We love them. We love them.